Anne of Green Gables by Ellen Montgomery. And we're going to read the chapter three today. We already read chapter one and two. And this is a very tiny book. This is not the big book. Chapter three, Anne's history. Anne sat up in bed. She didn't know where she was. Then she remembered this was Green Gables and they don't want her because she wasn't a boy. And jumped out of bed and knelt in front of the window to look out. On both sides of the house were apple and cherry trees. In the garden stood lilac trees with purple flowers. Beyond the garden, a field sloped down to a brook, and past that was a hill covered with sprouts and fig trees. Anne was startled by a hand on her shoulder. It's time you are dressed, Marilla said. Anne stood up. Green Gables is so beautiful, she said. I was imagining that I was going to stay here forever and ever. You'd better get dressed. Never mind your imagining, said Marilla. Breakfast is waiting. Soon Anne was downstairs. Her clothes were neat, her hair was brushed and braided, and her face was washed. After breakfast, Anne offered to clean the dishes. Can you wash dishes right? Marilla asked. Pretty well, Anne said, but I am better at looking after children. It's too bad you don't have any here for me to look after. I don't want any more children than I have got now, said Marilla. You are problem enough. What's to be done with you? I don't know. Matthew is a silly man. I think he is lovely, Anne said. I felt he was a kindred spirit as soon as I saw him. You're both odd, if that's what you mean, Marilla said with a sniff. You may wash the dishes, use plenty of hot water, and be sure to dry them well. After Annie washed the dishes, Marilla told her she could go outside until lunch. Annie ran to the door. But when she reached the doorway, she stopped. She turned and came back to the table. What's the matter now? demanded Marilla. I don't dare go out, Annie said. I won't be able to help loving all those trees and flowers and the orchard and the brook. It is so hard to keep from loving things, isn't it? I was very glad when I thought I was going to live here. I thought I would have so many things to love, but the dream is over, so I don't think I'll go out. I'll just sit here. Annie sat at the table until Matthew came in for lunch. As they ate, Marilla said, I'm going to drive to White Sand with Annie. Mrs. Spencer will probably arrange to send her back to the orphanage. Matthew said nothing. After lunch, he hitched the horse to the buggy. Then he opened the yard gate for Marilla and Annie. Marilla looked back as the buggy bounced along. Matthew was leaning over the gate, looking sadly after them. I have made up my mind to enjoy this drive, Anne said. I'm not going to think about the orphanage. Are we going over the lake of singing water today? We're not going over Barry's Pond, if that's what you mean, Marilla said. And if you're going to talk, you might as well tell me about yourself. I was 11 last March. And started. I was born in Bolingbroke, Nova Scotia. My parents were Walter and Bartha Surley. They were teachers. They both died of a fever when I was a baby. No one knew what to do with me 
and continue. And I didn't have any relatives. Finally, Mrs. Thomas said she would take me. She was our housekeeper. I helped look after her four children and they took a lot of looking after. When I was eight years old, Mr. Thomas died. His mother wanted Mrs. Thomas and the children, but she didn't want me. Then what happened? Marilla asked. Then Mrs. Hammond took me because I was handy with children. Anna said, she had eight children. Six of them were twins. Then Mr. Hammond died. Mrs. Hammond and her children left, so I had to go to the orphanage. It was overcrowded, but they had to take me. Were those omen good to you? Marilla asked. Annie's face turned red. She looked embarrassed. Oh, they meant to be, she said slowly. But they had a lot to worry about, you know. They were poor, and Mrs. Thomas's husband was drunk a lot of time. Marilla asked no more questions. Pity was tearing on her heart for Anne. What a terrible life she had. No wonder she longed for a real home. What if she let Annie stay at Green Gables? Matthews was set on it, and Anne seemed nice enough. Chapter 4 Marilla Makes a Decision Marilla and Annie finally arrived at Mrs. Spencer's house. Mrs. Spencer came to the door with a look of surprise. Oh dear, dear, she said. You were the last folks I thought I would see today. How are you, Annie? I'm as well as can be expected. Thank you, Annie said quietly. There's been a mistake, Marilla said. We told Robert that we wanted a boy. You don't say, said Mrs. Spencer. Robert's daughter Nancy brought the message and she said he wanted a girl. Well, Marina said, the mistake been made. On the orphanage take Annie back? I suppose so, Mrs. Spencer said. But Mrs. Blewett was here and wants a girl to help her. She has a large family. Annie will be very girl for her. Marilla had never met Mrs. Blewett, but everyone knew that she was mean and stingy. Servant girls told terrible tales of her children. Marilla wasn't sure she wanted to give Annie to such a family. Does Mrs. Bellwit now? Mrs. Spencer cried. How lucky we can settle this right away. Annie stared at Mrs. Blewett. She was really going to be given to this unsmiling woman. Her eyes filled with tears. It seems there's been a mistake, Mrs. Blewett. Mrs. Spencer said, Mr. and Mrs. Cuthbert wanted to adopt a boy, not a girl. Yesterday you said you needed a girl to help you. I think this one will be just right for you. Mrs. Blewett looked at Annie from head to foot. If I take you, Mrs. Blewett said, you will have to be a good girl good and smart and respectful i'll expect you to earn your keep and no mistake about that mrs blewett turned to marilla yes i might as well take her off your hands if you like i can take her right now marilla looked at annie and knew she could not give her away well i don't know marilla said 
Matthew and I may want to keep any after all. I just came over to find out how the mistake has been made. I think I'd better take Annie home again. Annie and Marilla climbed back into the buggy. Did you really say you might let me stay at Queen Gables? Annie asked. Or I just imagined that you did. I think you'd better learn to control that imagination of yours, Marilla said. I haven't made a final decision yet. I'll do anything you want if you keep me, Annie said meekly. When they arrived back at Green Gables, Marilla told Matthew what had happened at Mrs. Spencer's. I wouldn't give a dog I like to Mrs. Blee. I don't like her style myself, Marilla admitted. And since you seem to want to keep Annie, I'm willing. The next day, Marilla told Annie that she could stay. What should I call you? Annie asked. You'll just call me plain Marilla. I'm not used to being called Mrs. Cuthbert. It will make me nervous. It sounds disrespectful to just say Marilla, said Annie. Not if you speak respectfully, Marilla said. Everybody in Avonlea calls me Marilla. But Annie had another question. Do you think I'll have a best friend in Avonlea? She asked. I have dreamed of having a best friend all my life. Diana Barry lives nearby. She's about your age, Marilla said. She's a very nice little girl. You'll have to behave yourself when you meet her. Mrs. Barry won't let Diana play with any girl who isn't nice and good. Annie's face lit up. What is Diana like, she asked. I hope her hair isn't red. It's bad enough to have red hair myself. I would hate I would hate it if my best friend had red hair too. Diana is very pretty, Marilla said. She has black hair and eyes and rosy cheeks and she's good and smart. That's better than being pretty. I'm so glad Diana is pretty, Annie said, because I know I'm not pretty myself. It will be wonderful to have a beautiful best friend. A little while later, Annie was in her room sitting on a chair by the window. I'm going to imagine that I am beautiful, Annie said to herself. I am tall and I'm wearing a white lace gown. There are pearls in my dark hair. Annie ran to the mirror and looked at herself. Her freckled face and gray eyes peered back at her. You're not beautiful. You're only plain Anne of Green Gables. Anne said, but it's much nicer to be Annie of Green Gables than Anne of Nowhere, isn't it?